You got to be ready. You got to be ready. I'm waiting by the river. If he comes, I'm ready to be with him.
get back up here like we want him to, to be. The Bible said they professed that they knew God, but in works they denied him, being unaccountable and disobedient and unto every good word reproved pray. Brother Alfred, would you stand and pray God bless him on this way? I guess I should have waited to the first of the year to preach this message. But the Lord didn't give it to me next week, so I'm going to go ahead and do it today. I want to preach on profession without possession. Profession without possession. We're living in a day when people everywhere claim to be Christians. I don't care what they do, what kind of life they live. They still profess to be a Christian. Everyone claims to know Jesus Christ, but in works, they're denying. It's not what it used to be. Their lifestyle says something, but their way they live is altogether different. Jesus said, many shall come to me in the day saying, Lord, Lord. Now, what do I mean by profession? Who is one who claims to be saved? One that claims to know Jesus. One that claims to know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, but their life does not say that. One who claims to have relationship with God, but you know not possessing salvation. Your time has explained that those people who were professing Christ, but in works they were denying Him. They didn't know him. They didn't have an idea who he was. In other words, their walk was in contrast or contraction to what their talk was. They claimed to be a Christian, but their lifestyle said something altogether different than being a Christian. We're living in a day when people are claiming to be Christians, but their works and deeds, they deny the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm here to tell you, it's time that people quit denying Jesus Christ and put him in their lives as to where he needs to be. Amen. Judas preached, but he and he did mission trips. But in the end, everyone knew that Judas was a thief and a pretender. He did not care about God. He did not want to be where the Lord had let him be. But let me just put it in my message. What do you want to be? Do you want to be a pretender or do you want to be a possessor? We are having immoral relationships and still claiming to be a Christian in the eyes of people. You're a professor. You're not got the real thing. David says, I'm glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. I'm simply saying, if you miss church and fellowship with God's people and go around day after day and feel good about that, there's something wrong in your life. Amen. Never bother you. There's something that's drastically wrong when you can sit at home and not come to church. The Word of God said that we are to examine ourselves. You know why a lot of people won't do that? They're afraid of what they're going to find. They don't want to be examined. You know, every time I go to the doctor, he starts putting me on that table. He picks on my knee. I don't know what that knee's got to do when he hits you with that little hammer, but it flies up. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It flies up. We find out that he grabs us in the throat. Sometimes like he's got a choco on us. He makes us open our mouths. And I'd rather do anything but that when he sticks that old wooden comb. Whew. Just thinking about it just makes me shiver. Pushes your tongue down. He examines you. And if something's wrong, he'll find. 
Do you know God's not like that? He's got a big light that looks upon you. He knows what you are. He knows what you are at all times. You don't fool God. You may fool the preacher. You may fool the members in the church. But you don't fool the almighty God. Because he knows you. Would you lift your hand if you know what I'm talking about this morning. He knows who you are. And the word of God tells us to examine ourselves. And see just how we match up. With what the Word of God says that we ought to be. You'll notice that those that profess Christ, but they do not possess Him. There will be no change in their lives. Hey, if you're here and you're able professing Christ, there must be a change that had taken place. In 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, said, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. No, I'm not talking about instant maturity. But I'm talking about a definite change. You may not change everything, Sister Bob. You may have to work on some things. But when you come down to an altar and you get saved, you become a changed. Hallelujah. If you don't say amen, I will. If you don't come down and you get changed, then there's going to be a definite change that's going to take place. Right, amen. There's got to be some evidence in your life that shows that you've been born to good, born again. I seen a sticker the other day that says, if you were put on trial, for, a, for being a Christian, would they find enough evidence in your life to convict you? There will be a change in the way you live when you get saved. You will not go to the same places that you used to go anymore. You won't go to the strip joints and the halls and the drug dealers and the liquor stores and etc. and all the devil's places. You won't say the same things that you used to say before. You are different than you ever been before. Why, preacher? Because I've been changed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I wonder has anybody been changed here in this congregation this morning. If you have, you ought to act like you've been changed. Amen. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Your language is going to change. Amen. Transform from cursing to praises. Lord of a conscience of the whole time. Hallelujah. I said you're going to change the way you are. There will be a definite change in your life. Look at the uh, time that one time the man was recorded of having cut himself in the stones. His body, the Bible said, was covered with cuts and scars. He wore no clothes. Satan had stripped him of everything in life that he had. But when Jesus passed by one day, the Bible said he got saved. And the Bible said he found clothes and in his right mind, sitting at the foot of Jesus. My friend, when a man got born again, there is a definite change that you're going to see in his life. It's not a put on. It's not something that people give you but glory be to God when you get the real thing it's going to make a difference in your life Amen. I'm simply talking about when you get saved what greater thing that you could do to yourself that in this time of new year approaching the greatest gift that's ever been given to mankind was that he could be saved. Amen. Neighbors will notice a difference about the way you look. Amen. You don't have to wear a sign saying I'm a child of God. You act right and 
taught right, look right. They don't know it. Ladies will start to look like ladies. Oh, God, help me this morning. Not like street walkers. Preacher, I wouldn't have said that. Come you lay down and say it. Amen. The way you dress will start looking more modest. Men, I ain't letting you off either. Men will look like men. Amen. People can't tell the day if it's a woman or a man. Right. I'm telling you the truth. We was at a place the other day. It's just what I said is, is that a man or a woman? And she said it real loud. I said, shh. <laughs> I don't think Jamie would mind me telling you. They it worked the other week. And they were in McDonald's, I guess it was. Parties. And this man came in with a dress on. He was decked out with a tire. Looked just like a woman. And had a little boy, a little mental boy. Jamie said they didn't look at him to make fun of him. When they started to leave, he started cursing them out and pulled out a gun. Folks, we're living in bad times. It's awful when you can't tell a woman from a man. And all these things that they have passed in the Congress in the last few months about the lesbians and the gays and they can marry and all this stuff. You can believe in that if you want to. But I said that's a stink in the nostrils of God. God didn't mean for man and woman to be that way. And that's not the way He wanted it to be. Amen. But it's bad when you get saved, Jesus Christ comes in and begins to transform the way you live and the way you look. Somebody said, well, I didn't change. You didn't get saved. When God comes on the inside, He'll take care of the outside. And you ain't got to worry about it. Somebody said, oh, I don't know about I do. I know the power of the Almighty God and I know He's able to do all things in our lives. Amen. David said, I was glad. But they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. Yeah. I think this year ought to be a year of rededication. Somebody said, you know, I, I, I want to make New Year's resolution. I hope the preacher lets us do that. If you do it, you'll do it on your own. I won't let you do it. <laughs> I found out that when people make New Year's resolution, Brother David, they tell lies. And they lie all year long because they, they tell God, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. You say, how do you know? Listen, I'm a pastor. I've seen it done so many times where people say, I'm going to make a new resolution. I've seen them stand up in the, in the, in the churches and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. It's not something that you ought to have done. It's something you ought to have been done all the time. I want to tell you, when we put God first, when we put Him where He needs to be first, He will take care of all of our troubles. Hey, when you know it's Sunday, it's approaching, you'll not get uneasy. Because I know that preaching is dear. My friend, as a born-again Christian, that ought to excite us. We've got people here that senior citizens that never miss the dark that door. Amen. The only way Bill standard and he's sitting right there. The only way he misses church is Linder's sick and can't get here with him. He's going to be about the Father's business. He can't hardly walk up those steps. But brother, there's one thing about him. When he's sitting there and the Word of God's being preached, he'll cry. He'll throw his hands up in the air. There's something that that man has got that other people don't have because they don't get excited about coming to the house of God. When you get saved, there will be a love for the church just as much as for the love of God. Some of you here today, just very thoughts. Seldom think about the coming of the Lord and give you an uneasy feeling when you think about it. Feeling way down in the inside, it makes you uneasy. And I'm 
wondering if that's because you're really not ready for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. I love you and I appreciate you. I don't want you to come to church because I'm the pastor. I don't want you to come because we sing. I don't want you to come because it's a good church. I want you to come because you love the Lord Jesus Christ and you want to put Him first and nobody else. Amen. Amen. If you're a Christian, there will be a longing in your heart to see the one that died on the cross and just saved your soul. Let me just say that God has all kind of paddles that He can use to get your attention. Anybody ever got a whipping from God? Just one person. Yeah, I know a lot of times I've got whippings from God. When you begin to lose out with God, you lose your lack of joy. You don't smile anymore. Amen. Some of you started smiling when I said that. You don't smile anymore. You don't have any peace. You go to bed at night and you always worried about something. Some of you under the sound of my voice, you're on medicine this morning because your nerves are so bad that you can't hardly stand it. You don't have the peace that you want to have. You have illness throughout your body. You're hurt. You know, I've said it many times. After I reached 50 years old, I hurt in places I didn't know I had. And then somebody told me recently that it gets worse. You have financial difficulties. You know that's one of the most, or is the most, accurate thing that caused men and women to force in this world is financial difficulty. You may not want to hear this this morning, but this is what the Lord gave me and I've got to give it to you. It's financial difficulties where that you want more than you can afford. It's sad to say that a lot of folks went out this week or last week and borrowed money from finance companies. And they bought their kids Christmas and they had a great Christmas. But now, well, baby doll, they got to start paying in January. And they'll pay it for the hair all year long. Then next Christmas, they'll get it paid off for now November. And guess what? They'll go back and borrow it again. I don't believe in that. And if you did that, please try to stop. If I can't afford something, I don't get it. I said if I can't afford something, I don't get it. I'd like to have a new Cadillac. How many like to have a new Cadillac today? Raise your hand. <laughs> Mom's got an old one. It's all you going to have. But God's blessed you with other things. Some of you drive Fords. I went by one of my members' house that lives over here, right off this road named Skinner yesterday. <laughs> I don't know what he was doing out there. They had big horse trailers out there. They had the cars full everywhere all over the lot, yard. And I told Sister Lance, I said, I believe they're eating, you wanna stop? <laughs> She said, if we stop and, knock and come in, they'll say, come on in and eat with us. Amen. There was time of gathering together. I knew what they were doing. There's going to be a time one of these days Hallelujah. when all the saints of God, Amen. I don't know if that excites you or not, Amen. but it excites me. Because I've got loved ones that's done gone on to be with the Lord. And Sister Ann, one day we're going to see Penny again. And we're going to see her shouting over the strong room of God. One of these days we're going to see your loved ones, your mothers and daddies and friends and loved ones that's gone on. But more than we will want to see them, we're going to want to see Jesus because He died for us. Amen. And I love Him and appreciate Him. Amen. Also, there's jobs. People are losing their jobs. He 
It's hard to tell people. You want to tell people everywhere you need to pay your tithes. See, we couldn't have these pretty lights if you didn't pay your tithes. You'd have to be sitting on the floor because we wouldn't have no pews. Some of you wouldn't come. We wouldn't have these screens and these microphones. All the things that we have. And I thank God for every one of them. But if it wasn't for people paying their tithes and supporting the church, we wouldn't have these things. Some of you shout on credit because you don't pay your tithes. What do you mean, preacher? Well, the Lord's give you credit. Maybe you'll start paying. But remember, God said to them, I've seen people that paid their tithes that lost their job and asked me, why? But every time see me, it would happen. Brother David, God would give him something better. Amen. I had a, I think I might have told you, I had Brother Milford Watson. He was a big logger. Bobby knows him. And first church I pastored in Easley. And the Watson was a, he was just a joker all the time. He couldn't hardly carry on a conversation with him. He won't joke and go on all the time. He come to church one day, one Sunday morning. I said, Brother Watson, where's Betty? said, she's sick. I think she's got the stampers. <laughs> he said, she's a hooping and a coughing. He said, she could be a coon dog. He said, she's bawling. He said, she's awful. I told him, I said, well, Brother Watson, don't worry about it. Lord ain't never took nothing away from him. He won't give you something better. He went home and told her. She was in church Sunday night. I think she come to scold me. But God's been good to us. He's blessed us. God knows how to get your attention. If you're just a professor, there has always seen that there is something missing in your life. And why do you want to go around professing when it won't do you any good? You need to profess the love of God and Him will live within you that when you get ready to die, you're going to heaven. Amen. No desire to be at church. No desire to read your Bible. Some people think they're doing God a favor because they come on Sunday morning. You're not. You're not. No desire to be with Christians. Avoid. There's something missing in your life. God can't settle that today. Don't be a professor. But you need to be a professor of what God has given to you. You know, Coke had a slogan out years ago. It was the real thing. Well, I got news for them. It's not in a bottle of coke. Amen. The real thing is found in the Word of God when a person commits herself unto the Lord. Amen. There's nothing like committing yourself. When you lay down to die, when you've committed yourself to God, you know everything's alright because you've already cleared it all in heaven. You know where you are. You know what you stand. Nobody knows your life better than you. Amen. So you can't get away. You can't deny it. Because God knows who you are. You know, somebody said one time, I wish everybody looked the same. I don't. <laughs> I'm not lying, I don't. <laughs> what well, about a little like Brother Melton? What if all the ladies look like Sister Lene? That'd be awful, wouldn't it? You wouldn't even have to look in the mirror. You just look at somebody coming out of there. So there they come. <laughs> or Alfred. Well, what they all look like? Oh no. <laughs> but the Lord's good to us. Amen. How many of you wasn't blessed at Christmas time? 
I went by to see what JD got. Actually, made brunch for us, and we went by, and JD had on his pajamas. He had on a pair of boots with the tag still on. And when I walked in the door, he had a gun, and he was shooting things at me. God's good. But you know what the problem is today? Christmas comes for most of us every day. Every day. If you want something, you go out and buy it. You don't wait till Christmas to do it. You just go get it. We get our needs made. But David, God's been good to us. He's blessed us in so many ways that we could never, never thank Him enough. If we took the rest of next year, Brother David, and just come to church and say, Lord, I just want to thank you for what you've done for me last year. And you know, we look around, and I've said this year myself, with my wife being sick, it's been a bad year. Sister Joanne said to me today, it's been a bad year. But it could have been worse. We could not be here today. And because we're here, we ought to lift our hands and praise God and honor Him and thank Him for all that He's done for us this past year. Amen. I hope next year's better. But if it isn't, I know that I'm serving a God. Brother Taylor, that'll take care of me regardless of what I'm going through. I have a heavenly Father as long as I possess what I say I am that will go with me even to the end of the way. And we need to understand that. We are not serving a weak saint. We're not serving somebody that can do for us if he wants to. The Bible said to ask and you shall receive. It's time for us as children of God to understand that we are not in control of nothing. But he's in control of everything. And regardless of what we're going through, he's our father and he will take care of us. Yes. So profess. Confession without possession. I can tell you I got thousand dollars in my bill file. And if you believe that, I'll sell you some swamp land and dollars. I don't have it. But I can tell you my name is written in the Lamb Book of Life. And you can believe it because I've already had it put. Jesus wrote it down when He saved my soul. Amen. And He wrote your stand. Right, God. Would you stand with us all over the world? I'm glad that what I have is not a figment of my imagination. It's not something that I have imagined in my mind. But when I pray and believe, I believe God is doing what He said He would do. We have come so far here at the Donald's Church of God. People are coming. We're getting new people. The Lord's blessing us. We've got more than we've ever had before as a church. We need to be thankful. Amen. I received another card this week from Brother Kearns. Want me to relate to you again how thankful they were to receive $3,600 for the home for children. I believe it's our duty help people. If I didn't knew anything or anybody in this church that wasn't going to get anything for Christmas, I would have helped you. But more than that, I'm so thankful for a baby that was born in a stable. 
Hallelujah. By the name of Jesus. Didn't have a place to lay his head. Because what a difference he made in this world. With every head bowed and every eye closed. If you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior. You don't have to go through a fairy tale life, but He can become real to you. <laughs> Glory. He can become one to you that sticketh closer than a brother. He's one that will never let you die. He's just God. You need prayer. These altars are open today. You may come. Come freely. He loves you. He loves you. He cares for you. Are they one? How many would lift your hands with me today and say, Lord, I I just want to thank you. I don't want to ask you for anything. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you for your goodness to me. And how good you've been to me and my family. Lord, I love you. I appreciate you. God have your way in our lives. for this time in your house to lift up your name, Father. We thank you for the word that's been presented to our hearts and our spirits. And we ask that you go with each one of us today. Help us to be, Lord God, that light shining out into a world that's lost and dying today, Father. We thank you in Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen.